Good morning, friends, and a warm welcome to this week's service. My name is Tabang, and I serve here at Bryanston Methodist Church as a youth and young adults pastor. If you are joining us for the first time, you are welcome, and you can also go through our YouTube channel to check out other previous videos. And if you are joining us again, it is always a pleasure to uh, come to you uh, every Sunday and lead you in a space of worship. I hope you have been keeping warm because throughout the week it's been cold and then we also saw a rain in some parts of the country and we give God thanks for the gift of rain. So friends, I, I, I pray that you have been um, reflecting on these things and also giving God thanks because we need to learn to give God thanks in every situation and in every small or big thing in our lives. Today is also the 6th of September and in the Methodist Church calendar we call September a youth month because September is a month of growth, September is a month where we get into a new season of spring. So I pray that may September or may this season be a season of growth in your life, growth in area of your life, growth in your spirituality, growth in your, your, your emotional being, and growth in just um, every area of your life. Now, it is our tradition that uh, as believers, we share the peace of the Lord every Sunday we meet, but I also encourage people to share peace of the Lord with other people in whatever space that they find themselves in. So if you are tuning into the service and there is someone next to you now, please find it uh, in your heart to share uh, the peace of the Lord with the person next to you. May the peace of the Lord be with you and may it also be with you. Also, if you are having a birthday today or had a birthday between last Sunday and today, friends, happy birthday to you and we pray God's richest blessings upon your life. May he keep you safe, may he grant all your heart desires and may he, may he give you many more years to come so that you live and shine his name and embrace his name wherever you are. And now let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Who am I that the highest king would welcome me? I was lost, but he brought me in all oh, his love for me, all oh, his love.
For Babylon, I will come and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. This is the word of the Lord. This is one of many people's favorite verses. Because it gives them hope, particularly verse 11, when God says, I know the plans that I have for you, and those plans are not plans to harm you, but to, to give you hope and prosperity. We read from the book of Jeremiah today as the beginning of youth month, and the message that I have for you is the message of hope, the message of courage, and the message to inspire you to hold on. Being a young person is difficult, especially now in the time that we find ourselves in, because there are many battles that we are fighting. Some battles are easy to share with other people, and some battles are difficult to share with others. Some battles are external, they can be seen, and many of the battles are internal, they cannot be seen, but we, only us, can feel them, and we can maybe share, and at times we even struggle to share these battles. So, we also have um, communal battles. Battles uh, we find as a result of finding ourselves in a community. Battles where um, we are pushed to the sides because of our sexualities, pushed to the side because of our physical structures, pushed to the sides because of the colors of our skin, pushed to the side because of the language that we speak, pushed to the side because we are not as big as others, we are even bullied in our schools. So there are many challenges that comes with being a young person in this day and age. Where am I going with this? We read from the book of Jeremiah 
And chapter 29, the Israelites, God's people, are now in exile and they are under the leadership of King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. Now, you can imagine their life under the captivity of their enemies. But, and you can also imagine the questions that they've been asking themselves. Where is God when we are suffering like this? And it's always the case that when we are suffering or when life is not going as expected, the first question that we ask is, where is God when we are suffering like this? Now, when we read, God uses Jeremiah, his prophet, to write a letter to these people in captivity. To remind them that one, he is still their God, but two, to say unto them that even when they are in the land of the cap even in the land of, of captivity, God Himself will come and get them out. But again, one of the most important things is that God Himself still has plans for them, even in the midst of their challenges. And now there are three things that I want to that I want us to look at. The first thing is even in the midst of challenges, do not stop living your life. We, we always hear of this nice phrase that says, when life gives you lemon, make lemonade. Now the Israelites are under captivity. They are not in a place that they like. They are not in a place that they want. King Nebuchadnezzar is the leader of the people that are oppressing them in this time. And God says to them in the letter in chapter, in, in verse 5, chapter 29, verse 5, build houses, settle down, plant gardens, eat whatever they may produce. Now God is saying, even when you are in exile, continue to live your life. There's no need for you to fold your arms and say, because we are now in exile, we are not going to live our lives. And this is now the message again that I come to bring to you this morning. Even when you are going through the most, even when there are challenges in your life currently, do not fold your arms and say, why should I continue to wake up? Why should I get up, get dressed and, and do this life thing? Even in the midst of challenges, we move as other people would say. We do not stop living our lives because of challenges. We find a way to live in the midst of challenges. So I don't know what you are facing right now. But what I can tell you is that continue to live your life in the midst of these challenges. Because God is on your side. Because God is going to give you hope and power. Live your life regardless. Continue to live your life. Because, you see, the enemy gets excited when... They win. The enemy gets excited when you stop living because it means you would have lost. But God says to the Israelites, live your lives. Continue to build houses. Enjoy your life. Live normal lives even when you are in exile. So live a normal life even when you are going through the most. The other thing is, verse 10, God says, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come and fulfill my promise and I'll bring you back to this land. God has not forgotten his people. Perhaps many people have been asking this question. Where is God during coronavirus? When is COVID-19 going to end? Where is God in the challenges that I'm facing? When is God coming to deliver me? But listen to God. After 70 days, I will come. So, it is not necessarily about this time frame of 70 days. But the message that I want to get across is that when the time is right, God himself is going to come and take us out of whatever issues that we are facing. So this means that God has not forgotten about us. This means that we should not fold our arms and say, no, God has forgotten us. God has not forgotten about us. This is why he's saying, after 70 days, I'll come to you. This is why we need to be reminded that even in the midst of challenges, God himself is with us and he will come and deliver us from whatever that we are facing. The people might have asked themselves a question. When is God coming to take us out of this exile? When is God coming to save us from these people? Where is God? But God himself, the omnipresent God, God who is everywhere, God is omnipotent, God who is omniscient, God who knows everything, God who is 
everywhere. God who has all the power says to them, I will come and take you out of that land when the time is right. So even in the midst of the challenges that we are facing, God is with us because we believe that God is omnipresent. God himself is going to come and take us out of those situations. And again, one of the things that the people of God miss is the fact that God is everywhere. They thought God was in Jerusalem. They thought God was only in a temple. But they didn't know what we know today. The fact that God is everywhere at all times. Omnipotent and omniscient and omnipresent. I will come and take you out of this place. And I will fulfill my goal. I, I will fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. You see, the Bible is full of promises. Promises from God to us. But one of the things that I know, one thing that I know is that every promise that God has made shall come to pass. God himself is going to deliver. So God is not like us who promise something and forget, who promise something and do not deliver, who promise something and expect something back. But God is with us and God will always bring his promises to pass. Verse 11, for I know the plans that I have for you. God's people are in exile. God himself says to them, I still have plans for you. So I have not forgotten you. You are still my people and I'm still your God. Even in the midst of challenges that we are going through, we are still God's people and he is our God. Listen to Jeremiah somewhere in chapter 33. He says to, God says to his people through the prophet Jeremiah, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Now this means whether you are in exile or not, my everlasting love for you still remains. Whether, whether you're going through challenges or not, my everlasting love for you still remains. And if you read the New Testament, we see God's everlasting love coming through to pass through his only son that the Bible says, for God loved the world so much that he gave his only son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. I have loved you with an everlasting love. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord himself. Those plans are to prosper you and not to harm you. They are the plans to give you hope and future. As young people, as we live our lives, trying to figure out where is our life going, where is tomorrow have all a heaven for us we try to have plans we try to make life and there are also expectations from our families from our parents and we sometimes wonder if we are going to prosper if we are going to make our parents proud but listen to what god says I know the plans that I have for you. So, young people, allow me to say to you today that God has plans for us. And those plans are not plans to harm us, but they're plans to give us hope and future. So, as you are trying to figure out what to do with your life, as you are trying to figure out where to go with your life, remember that God has plans for us. And those plans are not to harm us, but to give us hope and prosperity. So, our our prosperity is in the hands of the Lord. Our hope is in the hands of the Lord. Our future is in the hands of the Lord. What we need to do is to always pray unto God and give him all our plans. I have plans about your life. My dear brother, my dear sister, this is just a reminder that God has plans for us. And those plans are not to hurt us. Those plans are not to harm us. Those plans are not to disappoint us. Those plans are not plans out of nowhere. But they are plans from the Lord who is our creator. Those are the plans for prosperity, for hope, and for the future. So as we begin the youth month, 
as we begin the new season of spring, as we begin to look around and see trees grow, just know that you are also destined for growth. Just know that the same way that those trees are growing, and those trees are growing, and the process is a process that is, that is instituted by God. Just know that God will also make you grow like those trees. God will also make you prosper. God will also make you bear fruits. Just remain faithful and rooted in God. Challenges are part of life. Challenges are part of us. Tough times are part of us. Death is part of us. But one thing that we need to always be reminded is the fact that God is the God who is always there. We always need to be reminded that in all of this, God is the God who is going to give us the future and hope. No matter what happens, we don't know what tomorrow holds for us. But one thing that we should know is that our future is in the hands of the Lord. I don't know what is it that frustrates you about your future. I don't know whether you still have hope um, for the future because the world that we live in is the world that doesn't give us hope. We read of stories of corruption daily. We read of stories of young women being killed and raped. We read of stories when people who are applying for jobs um, experience sexual harassment. We read of stories where young people die. We read of stories and statistics that tell us that young people continue to be unemployment companies keep on closing and one wonders what kind of future are we going to have is there even going to be a future but let me say unto you my dear brother and my dear sister have hope because God has plans for us plans not to harm us but to prosper us and I say this with clear hope and conviction that God is not going to just leave us out of nowhere. He says in his way, for I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to give you prosperity, hope and future. So this is the message that I have for you from the Lord that God has the plan for your life. Just hold on to God. Do not let anything make you doubt the fact that God has plans for us. Do not let your current circumstances or challenges or situations make you doubt that God has plans for your life. Let me say unto you that the Bible is clear, the word of God is clear, that God has a plan for your life, for my life. God has a clear plan for future prosperity and hope for you and I. Let us look unto God. Let us look and focus on God, not on our challenges. And I pray that this message bring you hope. And I pray that this message reminds you that God is in charge of our lives. And I pray all of this in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word that reminds us, Heavenly Father, that even though we are in exiles of this world, even though, Lord God, we are facing challenges as young people, even though we are finding ourselves in a time, Lord God, when we are faced with challenges, when the future doesn't look bright at all, Lord, but your word comes to us, Heavenly Father, to say unto us that even though the future looks blurry, even though the future isn't shining, but you still have plans for our lives, plans to give us hope, tomorrow, prosperity, and every good thing, Heavenly Father. May we hold on to you, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, for all young people that are around and across the world, Heavenly Father. Give them hope, give them peace, Lord. Protect them, Lord God. Guide them, Heavenly Father. When they are asking themselves a lot of questions because of whatever is happening, be there, Heavenly Father. Grant them peace, O Lord, that surpasses understanding. And I pray all of this, Lord God, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I pray for all the places that they go to. I pray for all the places that they spend their time in. I pray for the institutions, Lord God, that they study in. I pray for their parents, Lord. I pray for everything about them and for them, Lord. I pray all of this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, friends. And I pray that God guide you, God bless you, and God bless everyone that you know. 
And now let us close the service with the words of the benediction. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. God bless you.